Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and first of all I would like to wish all of you a happy 2022. Uh, what I want to do in this video is to talk about Flask APIs. Uh, for various reasons, mostly because of the pandemic, I haven't really spoken or, or written about Flask APIs in a while. So I thought it would be interesting to show you the kind of a APIs that you can build with Flask in 2022. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you a quick demonstration of a recent project that I built. Uh, so this is this is a, a backend API uh, that I think uh, will surprise many of you. I'm not sure people associate uh, Flask anymore with with modern APIs uh, in Python. So um, so yeah, this is this is what I'm going to show you today. So uh, the, the project is uh, open source, of course. Uh, so it's called Microblog API. It's it's on my GitHub. And this is, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Flask mega tutorial, this project has nothing to do with, with the mega tutorial, but it implements a somewhat similar API for, uh, you know, that, that sort of matches the, uh, the, the project in the mega tutorial. So this, this is an API only. And, and then in, in a future project of mine, uh, you're going to see how to build a front end that uses this API. But for now, I'm, I'm only ready to show the API. Uh, so uh, as I said, it's on GitHub, so, so you, you can take a look at it and uh, and even run it. Uh, but I, I'm going to go ahead and show you how this looks. So I, I'm running it here on my machine right now. So I'm just going to connect to uh, localhost uh, 5000. And this is going to automatically redirect to the slash docs endpoint, uh, which serves live documentation for, for this API. So uh, this is uh, based on an extension that I built that you may, may have seen uh, last year, a few months ago. I, I tweeted about this. Uh, the extension is called API Fairy, and it allows you to auto-generate API documentation from your endpoints. So this is the type of thing that you get where, uh, where you have a complete site. Uh, so, so this is an introductory section that is written in the code as comments. So here you have some information about uh, configuration, how authentication works, uh, pagination, you know, all, all that stuff. Uh, this, the, the format for, for error responses, so all of that is in, in the introduction. Uh, the interesting part is that you have all the endpoints that this API supports uh, here. And uh, so, for example, let's say I want to register. So this is a, a blogging API, obviously. So the, f the first thing you do is you sign up for an account. Uh, so I'm going to register a new user. So I click on that. Uh, that brings me to a page uh, that shows me what do I need to send in the body of the request? Uh, so, so all the fields have uh, validation, uh, you know, clauses. So, so you know what the length of the fields need to be. Some are required. This one is not. So it's optional. You can omit it or send it as null. And then uh, the response is going to be a 201 status code with all these fields. So. Uh, Right here, you have a, uh, a little uh, panel where you can test the request right here in the browser if you want. And uh, below that, you have a curl uh, command line that you can use. You, you can copy paste uh, if you want to send a request to this API on, uh, you know, fr from your terminal, from your CLI. Uh, since this is a live server, uh, you, you get here the, uh, the URL and everything. So all you need to do is copy paste this, fill out the other uh, fields and off you go. And now you're sending a request. So uh, you can see that uh, on this one, there's no, uh, there's no indication that you need authentication. This is the user registration endpoints. So, so this one is open to anyone. Uh, so, so we can go ahead and send the request. 
so before we do that, I'm going to show you what happens when you send something invalid. So I'm just going to remove the password, which you can see that it is required. So I'm going to send this request like this. So when I send it, I get an error response and the error has a complete detail. Uh, so here's the password missing data for required field. And not only that, but also the email, which was uh, not a valid email address. So I, I've got uh, an error for that as well. So so this is the, the 400 error, uh, the 400 status code. So let's now, um, let's fix this. So let's say, I think I have a bunch of Miguel's here. Uh, let's try Miguel 33. I believe I haven't used that one yet. Uh, so email, I'm going to put a bogus email here. Uh, let's use 33 just in case. Uh, about me is optional, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, but password is required, so I'm going to set a password. And this is going to be a bogus password for now. So you can send this, and this is going to work. So, so I've got a 201. And it created the user so so that we we have a user now uh, so the the next step you, you haven't read the uh, authentication section uh, at the top right so I, i'm going to walk you through this the next step is to get an access token so that you can then use the api and send requests to every other uh, endpoint which which are most of them are uh, protected and they need an access token so i'm going to go to slash tokens here and slash API slash tokens. And this request has security. So this one requires basic authentication. You get a, a very simple uh, you know, description of what it is, but this doesn't matter because you, you get the prompt here. So you can enter your username and your password. So I just created uh, Miguel33 and the password was foo. So let's go ahead and try that and there we go. So, so 200 is the response. Uh, the, the, the two main responses here are 200 if it works, 401 if you send something that's invalid. So we got a valid one. Here you have a description of the response that you get. You get an access token, which, which you use to authenticate uh, and uh, access endpoints, and then a refresh token, which is what you use when the access token expires and you need to renew it. So, so the, there's a mechanism for that. Uh, for now, we only need the access token. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in the clipboard. So this is a JWT. You probably figured that out already. So now I have it in the, uh, have it in the clipboard. So um, let's get to posts and retrieve all posts. Let's, let's use this one. So this is uh, protected with uh, bearer authentication, so, so basically token authentication. Uh, this uh, panel on the uh, on the right already recognized that, and now instead of a username and password, it's asking me for a token. So paste the token here. Uh, the parameters here uh, are uh, th these these go in the query string of the URL, and they are f uh, th they're used for pagination. Uh, but, but the, none of them are uh, required. So let's forget about them. Let's ignore them and send the request. So there we go. And then we get the data. Uh, the data is a list of blog posts. Each blog post has some uh, content and then uh, an author with, with the information about the author, which has the same structure as the, uh, as the user. So if you look here in the documentation, this is all very, uh, very well uh, covered. So, so you get uh, an accurate description. And in case uh, you, you doubt this, this is all coming from a single source, right? So so there, there's no way that the documentation and the actual responses can get out of sync because they're, they're all generated from the same single source. Uh, so so when, when you make a change, it changes everywhere. So um, we have a list here of a bunch of posts. Uh, near the bottom, we should see, right, so, so at the bottom we have a pagination section where it shows us, uh, so, so we got uh, the first 
Uh, so starting at zero, 25 posts, which is the, the pagination, the page size. And then uh, it tells me that there's a total of uh, 120, so, so I could ask for more by now. Uh, if, if I go up to here, I can set an offset of uh, 26, or actually 25, and, and then get the second page of 25. Um, so you, you, you get the idea. So um, let me show you uh, a little bit of the code just so that you see how insanely beautiful and easy this is. Um, so I showed you, um, uh, what was the endpoint? The, the user registration was the first one. So let's go take a look at that one. So here uh, under users, uh, register a new user, right? So so th this is actually, this, this doc string is the documentation that you see on the documentation site. It, it comes right from there. So when you change it here, it changes there automatically. Um, so the only thing we need to do here is to build a user object, uh, a database object. This is using SQL Alchemy. So we build a user with the arguments that we receive and just put it in the database and that's it. And, and then we return the uh, we return the user. So the uh, the decorators that are here, these two, take care of all the uh, all the stuff that it's really generic and that applies to all the endpoints. So uh, this body uh, basically adds the validation for uh, for a user. Uh, it makes sure that you, you know, that the client sent a valid user schema, uh, and if the uh, the, the contents that uh, were sent by the user are invalid, they don't comply with the requirements of the user schema, then this code doesn't even run. You, you just get the 400 error with the list of errors, right? This is all handled for you. You, you don't have to worry about it in your application, right? And then the same thing for the response. Uh, we uh, we tell uh, this, uh, th this decorator that the response is a user with code 201 and all we need to do is we need to return the database object and you know the, the JSONification you know all that stuff uh, it, it, it just happens you, you don't have to worry about it. it it's all the same regardless of the endpoint that you use um, the uh, the other one that I uh, can show you we can look at the posts one that the one that gets blog posts uh, where is it? Retrieve all posts. So, so this, this is a one-liner. Uh, so this one uh, authenticates with token. So, so you you have to tell it with a decorator that that's what you want. It doesn't take any uh, any input arguments that are custom or specific to this endpoint, but uh, but but it uses pagination. So there's a decorator that uh, handles all the pagination. And you have to give it a bunch of things: the uh, the schema, uh, which is posts, uh, how you want the uh, the elements to be ordered. So you order by the timestamp of the post in descending order. So the newer posts will be uh, returned first, and then it, it'll go backwards in time. And then uh, and then you have to indicate what you want in the pagination section, uh, which is also another schema. And then. Uh, in the body, the only thing you need to do is you need to return a database query that uh, that returns the results, right? So, so this is just the SQL Alchemy select statement for for posts, select star from posts. It's basically what this does, and uh, that's it. Um, so, uh, I'm I'm very excited about this. Uh, of course, it took it, it took a few years uh, to to get to this level of sophistication. Uh, and, and a bunch of extensions that I built and that I use from others. Uh, so um, the extensions that I use that are mine are API Ferry. I mentioned this before. This generates the documentation uh, from, from all these decorators. And then I also use the Flask HTTP auth for, uh, for the authentication portion. And then uh, everything else, uh, I'm using uh, the projects from the from Marshmallow. Uh, there, there's a collection of projects that handle uh, the, the validation and uh, inputs and outputs and uh, the the uh, JSONification. You know all of that. Uh, it, it's all handled by Marshmallow, which is absolutely awesome. 
right? It, it's it's a great project that uh, for some reason I feel it's not it, it doesn't receive as much love as it deserves because you know it, it's 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 amazing. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you're interested in writing APIs in this type of uh, in, in this style, uh, so. This project, as I said, it's open source, it's on GitHub, and you're welcome to review it and uh, and run it yourself. This is actually very easy to run. And uh, here in the README section of this repo, I put a few options for you. So if you want the, the absolute easiest option to, uh, to, to get up and running with this project, you can just click Deploy to Heroku, and then this, this is going to uh, to send you to Heroku, uh, your own account on Heroku, where you can uh, you can deploy it. Uh, you will need to enter uh, a, a couple of things. It, it's going to ask you for uh, for an email server because uh, one of the one of the things that this um, this API has is password recovery uh, through emails to reset emails. So it, it will need to have access to an email server that that can be used to send emails to users. Uh, and, and and then it'll it'll deploy it to your own account, and then you you will have your own personal deployed copy of this API that you can play with, and you can send requests to. If you prefer to deploy in your computer, uh, you have two options after you set up your uh, your uh, configuration, which is the the same thing: email, uh, server, and and a couple other things. Uh, uh, you you in this time in this case you put it in a .env. A file and then uh, you you can run it with Docker if if you if you are into that and here I show you you know what what the commands are uh, even some uh, some commands to generate uh, generate some fake data that you can use to populate your database or you can do it locally um, the the old way just flask run and once again I show you how to uh, create a database and create some uh, some fake data to uh, to have some data to play with. Uh, so anyway, this is what a Flask API looks like in 2022. Uh, I believe this is, uh, you know, up to par with, uh, you know, what usually people consider the most modern, uh, you know, in, in API design, the, the async APIs, fast API and all that stuff, uh, you know, which are good. And, you know, I, I even like it to some extent, but, uh, but yeah, Flask, it's it's really, you know, there too, I think. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope you like this. And uh, if you have any comments, let me know. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.